Not long ago, I was in California for a secret screening of a new movie with the uh, teenage heartthrob Robbie Benson. It's a movie he has written and has had a great part in, in making come alive. I didn't like it. As a matter of fact, the, uh, the screening I saw was what's called a rough cut. I thought it was terrible. It may have changed uh, in post-editing, and it may be better than it was. We're going to show you some scenes from it now. Robbie Benson is a guy who started out as a young uh, boy playing boyish roles and has grown into young manhood now. But he really wants to do something else with his career. But for the moment right now, before my interview, let's watch a few scenes from his latest movie, Die Laughing. You're on the front page. Oh, man. You see what I mean? Last night I had a chance to clear myself. Now I'm a murderer on the front page. If you knew what winning that contest means to me and my friends. Five years, five years we've been playing 15 bucks a night club dates in places like Modesto and Redwood City. Hot dog stand openings, election rallies, wakes. Yeah, wakes. And you really think you have a chance to win? If I don't get busted. So what's going on? I don't know. Pinsky, did you do something to him? Oh, great. There goes my charm paper on the Federal Reserve System. Now you'll get an A on it. Oh, but he's just hungry, that's all. Oh, my baby just wanted his breakfast, didn't he? Yeah, it's on your... My God. It's just gibberish. What'd you expect, Shakespeare? Hey, your breakfast is getting cold. Come on, eat your toast on my job. Amy, monkeys don't usually type, especially to a music cue. This ain't no ordinary monkey. When did you change your name to Benson? How old were you? I was uh, 10 years old, I think. Name originally Siegel. Yes. Why did you change it? That's not such a bad name. No, Siegel is a beautiful name. Um, I'm very proud of it. What happened was is that I was, I had been in a couple of auditions, New York City, Madison Avenue type um, um, advertisement, advertising agency things, and there was always there were always these words that I, I kept hearing, things like um, the ethnic kid and the cute little Jewish boy. And That's the Jewish look. Yeah. yeah. And um, a couple of times it, it got, I guess, a little painful because I came home one day crying. Some guy had said, an ugly little Jewish kid, he can leave. And you were about 10 years old when this was going on. Right. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't understand it. And my parents wanted to, they knew how much I loved what I was doing because it was, it's beautiful, you know, when, when you're young and, and you feel like you're a part of something important and you mm -hmm. feel like you're doing something and you get a sense of responsibility and all that. And I wanted to continue what I was doing and my parents wanted to save me the pain. And instead of teaching me, you know, things like uh, prejudice and racism and making me just as prejudiced as the people who are saying them, they changed my name and kind of groomed me slowly. So now I'm just as hateful as they are. No. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm surprised to hear, well, I'm not surprised, I guess. I, uh, Broadway play, A Chorus Line, showed us the brutality of the audition, which, oh. of course, it's a pretty wild scene, I'm sure. It gets, believe it or not, more brutal as things get better. But it's nicer, though. Well, I think uh, people also don't understand, <clears throat> even in my business, television, you have to, you have to develop a thick skin to survive because yes. if you take uh, the way people talk about you like a pound of meat, it can destroy you. Sure. Uh, and you can lose all confidence you, you have and you, you're finished. Sure. That's why I think so many people who are successful in show business come across as being egomaniacs uh, because you have to do such strong counter work to, to counter all that negative. Right. Well...
But you don't seem that way. You seem very shy and easygoing. Well, you see, I have a great family life, and and I also, I don't, I, I kind of, in a weird way, go through life uh, with blinkers on, you know. I, there are things that I love to do, and that's just what I do. Mm -hmm. I, I go to sleep, I get up, and I love to sleep. I get up, and I come to work here, and then I go home, and I go to work, or I go home, and I'm with my family, and, you know, and I sit down with my guitar, and I start working on that, those things, but, but I don't, um, I don't go and do, it, it's funny, I'm not, uh, I'm, I stay in, in my own little, little world, not as a protection, only because that's what I really enjoy. How does that happen? Now, suddenly, I, I'm, I'm going to dissect you as a case uh, of the media and the hype that goes with the business and so forth. Suddenly, now, I see you on talk shows with your guitar, singing and playing. Does someone in charge of your career, or you yourself, decide, okay, I really want to be a singer now, and I want to get on the shows, and I want to show that I'm singing, and I really want to move in that direction? What do you do? You call up talk shows and say, hey, I'd like to be on? No, what had happened is that I grew up doing Broadway musicals. I've always sung. I started writing music when I was 14. I've been uh, very unsuccessful in the record business. You have cut records. A couple, and I've had a few record deals. And the problem was is that my father and I, we feel that we write very good music. And the record business and the deals and the companies and the executives always wanted us to do bubblegum kind of music yeah. and things that sell a lot of records. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, a lot of people who do it and they do it well and there's nothing wrong with selling a lot of records. I felt that we could sell a lot of records and also do our own music. So we've always been stifled. And what started happening is when I would go on these talk shows um, for a film or when they would call and ask if I would come on, I always brought my guitar and started singing um, a composition here and a composition there and started doing it our way until in the past few years our music has started to come out. And in Die Laughing, we wrote three of the songs. In Walk Proud, I wrote the score. Um, well, would you like to be known as a singer, though, more than an actor? Well, I'm, no, I, don't, I don't think of it as how people know me. It's, it's just another part of, of creating. And no, I can see that from your side, but I'm trying to represent how people see people in your, in your position. I know it's I, frustrating to always get shunned into... Well, I just want them to respect the music. I, if they want to see me as something, I'd love to be seen as a composer. Well, here's what young Mr. Benson really wants to be known as, so let's uh, be fair and give him a hearing. Erase the clouds and run with the sun. I gotta get all the way to the mountain top. I gotta get somewhere in those clouds up there. there 